You know what? That's what you get when... No. No, Paramore, no. Actually, yes, because that's how they got me in the first place. But you know, art well done is the one that sucks you in and makes you feel things. But I digress, that's a whole other discussion for another time. I've never been a huge fan of The Last of Us, the game I mean. It's just a bunch of walking, swimming because Ellie can't fucking swim, using planks to get from one building to another, and parts why the game doesn't let you run because people have to talk. But Watcher, the game is a beautiful work of art that tells an amazing story. Yeah, no. You know, call me old fashioned, but to me, before a game tries to be anything else, it needs to be a fucking video game. A fun one. So you can take your The Last of Us's, Death Strangings, and Annapurna Interactive bullshit and shove her up your ass. Anyway, right out of the gate, the HBO series managed to avoid pretty much every single trap these adaptations so commonly fall into. They steer clear from too much obnoxious in your face fan service, and they don't try to cram every single thing from the game exactly like they are in the game into the series. You know, like a proper adaptation. They manage to take the game's main points and ideas and make a TV series out of it. It doesn't even look like an adaptation at all. I even planned to make videos after each episode but backed out of it because, you know, it's not the kind of material you can really do that. Had I kept on, every video would be pretty much me praising the acting and the dialogue. It's like releasing a bunch of Tarantino reviews in a row talking about how great the dialogue is. And that is something that's great to see but not that fun to talk about. And to be fair, the acting and the dialogue stay absolutely brilliant up until the very end. The plot, on the other side, not so much. Episodes 1 through 5 were all on point. As I said, great acting, great characters, great dialogue, even great visuals. I mean, there were some minor issues, but nothing that really stood out or spoiled the experience in any way. But then, from episode 6 on, one of two things happened, and I'm still not sure which one it is, maybe it's both. Either the storytelling completely derails, or these minor issues start to pile up and become these huge deal-breaking problems. Let's start with number 1. World Building Anytime you have a story that takes place in a different world, or at least in a different version of our world, which is the case here, you need to make the rules of this new world clear to your audience. Or at least some of them. At least the ones that are going to affect your story. In The Last of Us, since the beginning, we are led to believe and even shown in quite effective ways how dangerous and ruthless this world is, and how happiness and a happy-ish ending is something that was probably only reserved for Bill and Frank. Seriously, shit is fucked up. But then, also since the very beginning, time and time again, this supposed danger is completely disregarded by the show. Joel and Ellie travel in broad daylight using main roads and cross big cities nonchalantly through the streets like there's absolutely nothing to fear while telling us the whole time how dangerous everything is. Joel often leaves Ellie by herself, sometimes alone, sometimes with people they have just met. Since leaving the QZ, Ellie and Joel barely cross paths with zombies or even bad people. Sure, when it happened, shit got intense, but if this happens so rarely, then how really dangerous is this world? Shit, they went three months without meeting anyone. Well, if they did meet anyone, no one ever told us about it. And I gotta tell you, not once in this entire season did I sense any kind of real danger. Sure, they talked about it a lot. All, all this open country? You're a capable guy. But there are worse things than infected out there. But the show never managed to actually make me worry about our characters. And this is not the only inconsistency with this world. Oh no, there are many many others, and episode 7 is the perfect episode for us to ask some questions, since it encapsulates so many of these inconsistencies. Ellie's roommate fled and got back into her dorm, in the middle of supposedly heavily guarded Fedra territory. Wasn't Fedra supposed to be an authoritarian heavily armed military, whom we are supposed to fear? And they got fooled by this little girl? This teenager? What? Then they sneak out again and the girl lights up an entire shopping mall. Where did she get the power for it? If a teenage girl can power up an entire shopping mall this easily, then why are humans still holed up in dilapidated camps on the ruins of inner cities? And speaking of inner cities... This is too remote for infected anyway. Well, then why didn't everybody just move to the woods? And you said infected? Yeah, but usually smaller colonies. Wandered off from the cities. All this open country out here? Turkey shoot. Well then why didn't everybody just move up north? How didn't this lit up gigantic shopping mall attract anyone? How did this girl spend god knows how much time in this place and has never seen that zombie who looked like he had been there for a while? You would imagine the first thing people would do when they go in somewhere is to scan for zombies. And why? Oh why would the Fireflies, a group that supposedly poses a threat to Fedra's authority, recruit this teenage girl, give her guns and shit, and send her on a bombing mission alone so soon. That's fucking stupid. Now, of course any of these observations in isolation could pass as poetic license or simple oversights, and complaining about them could be seen as nitpicking. But there's just too much of it. 
It is one thing to overlook small details in favor of your story, but that's not the case here. What we see here is gross inconsistency with world building. And then we, the audience, are left scratching our heads because we can't understand what is dangerous and what is not, what are the limitations of humanity in this post-apocalyptic world, and what can our heroes do and what can't they do. But Watcher, the world and the outbreak are not supposed to be the main focus of the story. Sure, I get that, but if they chose to tell their story in this world, then they need to be consistent with it. On a story like this, building up your world, setting up your rules, and staying true to them is paramount. And speaking of story, we'll now move on to... Number 2. The story. Well, what is it? No, seriously, what is it? We get this guy Joel, terribly scarred by the loss of his daughter 20 years prior, that now has to reluctantly care for this little girl who's the same age his daughter was when she died in a journey through this fucked up zombie infested world. Now, any human being that has ever heard a story like this knows what this is going to be about. It's gonna be about grief, them bonding, and us getting to see how an innocent child navigates this cruel violent world, right? So they leave the QZ, Tess dies, we get the Bill and Frank episode, and then they get to Kansas and we have the shocking stuff with Harry and Sam. Great drama, great acting, great dialogue up until here. And sure, we had some grief, we had some bonding, and we had some witnessing the child navigating this world, and then we skip three months ahead. Why? The dude killed himself in front of Ellie, how did that make her feel? And what about Joel? Isn't this series supposed to be about their relationship and how they navigate this world together? Why would you do a time jump of three fucking months when your story relies almost entirely on us spending time with these people and witnessing how they interact with each other? They hadn't even been together for that long before the time jump for fuck's sake. As far as we are concerned, they could be completely different people and their relationship could be 100% different from when we last saw them. This is effectively the beginning of a new story, it doesn't make any sense. And also, what the fuck happened during this time? They then arrive at Tommy's town, community or whatever the fuck, and Joel doesn't like that they're communists. And I'm like, oh, uh, okay, I guess they're going to discuss communism. But then they just don't. And then Joel's stabbed and we get the Ellie episode after Ellie, God only knows how, manages to drag him into a basement of a house after he collapses in the middle of nowhere. And look, people, this fella is fucking dead, okay? Done. He ain't going nowhere no more. And even if we are okay with the fact that Ellie had the help of Tatiana Maslany to carry him there, there's just no fucking way he's going to beat the infection. And then we have Ellie's flashback. And besides all the crazy inconsistencies we had on episode 7, I kept wondering, out of everything they could have shown us to help them build Ellie's character and help us understand why she is the way she is, why did they choose this story? Why is this important? How does this story contribute to Ellie's character? How do we, the audience, knowing this story, can understand Ellie better? Ellie is not your typical teenage girl. She is this feisty, foul-mouthed little girl that won't take shit from anyone. Why is she like that? Did she have any parents? How was it for her growing up without parents in a post-apocalyptic world? We don't know. We are never shown and we are never told. Instead, we get this kind of a love story about how she lost her friend, and I say friend because they weren't more than that for maybe an hour before the girl died. How this episode builds on Ellie's character or advances the story in any way is beyond me. But Watcher, Bill and Frank's episode also didn't advance the story or help to build any characters. Yes, but at that point, besides being a great, great standalone episode, Bill and Frank's episode was a wonderful way of building the world by showing us a different, more positive side to this fucked up reality. Also, there was Bill's letter to Joel which helped him find new purpose on taking care of Ellie. And it was also the third episode. We are now in episode 7 of 9. The story is supposed to be coming to a close. Ellie then finds the cannibals and they give her medicine. She then injects Joel's wound with it and he just comes back to life because fuck anything resembling realism in a series that went out of its way to talk about biology in the first few episodes, right? And besides being super violent and showing us that our heroes are capable of terrible things, I really don't know how this episode contributes to the story either. Also, the whole episode was confusing as fuck. Are these people supposed to be evil because they're cannibals? Are they even really evil cannibals by the way? Or are they just doing this out of desperation? Are we supposed to hate this dude because he eats people, because he's a cult leader, or because he fucks kids? Also, where the fuck was everybody when all hell was breaking loose and the fucking building was on fire? And then when the episode ended, I was left wondering where the hell was the story going. And not in an exciting way, like I can't wait to see what they do next, but in the confused way of someone who has no clue how they'll close any of this next episode. And by the way, close what? They built virtually nothing in terms of story. The story is heavily segmented, almost to a point where the episodes look self-contained. It's like we have this bunch of Joel and Ellie's chronicles that don't amount to anything. We barely have an overarching cohesive story. We have the beginning, then Tess, then Bill and Frank, then Harry and Sam, 
then Tommy's community, then Ellie's episode, then the cannibals, and then the thing in the hospital with the fireflies. And what's really bizarre about it is that none of these episodes are bad on their own. On the contrary, each episode in isolation is awesome, so we're left in this really weird situation in which we have 9 great episodes that make up a very mediocre overarching story. There's no real story progression or character growth. This is a supposedly heavily character based story in which no character, with the sole exception of Nick Offerman's Bill, is developed. The first few episodes were so fucking good and had me so hyped I thought this series would be one of those you wish you could forget just to see it again for the first time. And when I say I can't decide if the real problem was the piling up of these little issues or if the storytelling just completely derailed after episode 5, but I think it's both, is because there were signs since the beginning. There were these little weird moments since episode 1, but I kinda just shrugged it off like, mm, weird but okay. But as the season progressed, these little things became more and more apparent, more and more frequent, until it became very very clear that what we had were not little isolated mistakes, but a badly written universe with these huge flaws and inconsistencies in its rules. And then you get to a point where you just can't ignore it anymore. But then there's also the fact that I really struggle to understand how anything past episode 5 develops the story or the characters in any meaningful way. And then when you combine these two, what you get is a really messy, disjointed season of television that started as one of the best things ever and unfortunately ended up like so many other bad adaptations that are a dime a dozen. 